right when we go by, leave here, go down the hill, you're going to see a yellow house on the left side of the road. And that yellow house was inhabited by a guy named Harry Miller, an old miner. He used to sit out on the deck and wave the cars as they went by. And that began a tradition which I hope everybody follows. When you go by that house, either direction, everybody needs to wave, otherwise it's bad luck. <laughs> Mr. Miller died in 1974, and the overflow of Arbersville went down to the Yellow House, which is used kind of as a hotel in the early days. Now there I mentioned we had a number of, uh, of, of names of ladies of the evening. Here, for instance, was a lady with a receding hairline who was known as Timberline Kate. <laughs> Here's a lady with hair all mussed up and in bad condition, Sagebrush Annie. Here's a lady who has a foul disposition called Kitty the Bitch. <laughs> And here is a lady who does not handle her liquor very well, so there is no drinking before business hours, otherwise pass out, we'll have no business hours. <laughs> Those are some of the names that you had of the ladies of the evening throughout the state of Colorado. Okay, then the prize, whoever guesses the name of this song, gets Dwayne's hat. <laughs> Academy Award winning movie, song, if whoever gets it, just shout it out, okay? again. All-time record for skiers for the Monarch Ski Area, one mile down the pass, set last winter, 2013 and 14, 186,000 skier days. All-time record for snow, winter 2007 and 8. On December the 6th, 2007, I'm going down the pass to give a talk to the Monarch Ski Area at the steam plant in Salida. I drive by the Monarch Ski Area, which you're looking at right here, and it looked then, just like it looks now, like now, no snow. None. December the 6th. I give the talk at the steam plant. I get finished with the talk. Rich Moorhead, the mountain manager, walks up to me. Says Vanna Bush, you're gonna have to go over Poncha Pass and Cochito Pass. Monarch is closed. <laughs> Yay. I almost did not make it home because Ed plowed the road and I had a Nissan Centros. It's great, but I was bucking so much snow that I was down to 15 miles an hour when I hit Highway 50. That was the start of it, and. By the end of the year, Monarch had gotten an all-time record of 528 inches of snow, not one drop of which fell before December the 6th. <laughs> Pass. They named it Monarch Pass. And that is where Charlie Vale decided the road, the highway, would run. In 1879, Old Old Monarch was built. And that road ran right through the present ski area and tied in to present day Old Monarch Pass, ran down to the near the head of the Tamichi Creek, near White Pine, and then did not follow the present highway. It went over a pass called Black Sage Pass, right by Juanita Hot Springs, and came in at Doyleville. 
1921, old, old Monarch Pass was replaced by old Monarch Pass. <laughs> and that lasted from 1921 to 1939. And that is the present old Monarch Pass that people ski on today. <laughs> find out what existed in the West. You know, we'd had Lewis and Clark, we'd had Zebulon Pike, we had Stephen Long, but these guys were, went through an area in one day and they didn't really know it. The mountain men knew it, but they were long gone and never really wrote much about it. So the great surveys of the American West got started, financed by the federal government and the U.S. Army. And four great surveyors came out West. All of them kind of legendary. Uh, one of them was the great Clarence Rivers King, who exposed the diamond hoax in northwestern Colorado and became the first head of a new federal agency called the United States Geological Survey. The second was the great John Wesley Powell, who was the first guy to go down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon, and the second, 1869 and 71, and John Wesley Powell wrote a book in the 1870s, a report in the 1870s called Arid Regions of the West. And nobody before or after has ever understood the West better than Powell, who was the first man to say that the, we, the West, there is not plenty more where that came from. <laughs> our resources are not inexhaustible. We need to take care of our water and our land and our timber and so on. Secondly, he said, ranching is the natural way of making a living on the Great Plains. You don't have enough water to farm. Now, if you're going to farm, you better have access to irrigation. And John Wesley Powell said that if you're going to farm, then you better have the number one agency in the nation to help finance these irrigation districts and build reservoirs. And that was the federal government. And John Wesley Powell became known as the father of government bureaus. Bureau of Mines, Bureau of Land Management, United States Forest Service, Geological Survey, Bureau of Reclamation, Soil Conservation Service. All federal agencies that help people out in the West. The idea was if we could spend tax money on river and harbor bills out on the East Coast, then we damn well could spend taxpayer money to reclaim lands in the West. So today, the federal government is not looked upon as it was then. Then the federal government was looked upon as a great friend of the people of the West. And I would like now to lead three cheers for the federal government. One, two, three, hip, hip. <laughs> God, it was lukewarm. It was lukewarm.